So you can fast to know the will of God. In Acts chapter 13 and verse 2, the disciples came together to fast. And it was during that fasting and prayer that there was a prophecy the Lord spoke. He said, separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. And verse 3, and when they had fasted and prayed, you see, and laid their hands on them, they sent them away to their ministry. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So before you answer a call of God that is specific, God tells you go and do something. Before you go into it, you withdraw yourself. So that you won't just go and do it anyhow. God will guide you and give you a direction. And God will also empower you to do that which he has called you to do. Praise the Lord. And generally, also, we fast so that we can stay consecrated. So that we can be more spiritual. That is exactly what Apostle Paul was saying in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 to verse 27. Can we read it? 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 to 27. He said, Know ye not that day, because we are in a race from, heaven, from earth to glory. They which run in a race, all of them run. But only one will receive the prize. So he said, so run that you may obtain a prize. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things, is careful in everything he does. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown. They will give you one gold medal. They will give you one certificate. They will give you one plague. But we, we are running for the type Hallelujah. The reward we are having is an incorruptible one. So verse 26, he said, I therefore so run, not as uncertainty, so fight I, not as one that beat the air, because heaven is real. But I keep under my body. I keep under my body, my flesh. And bring it into subjection. Let my enemies, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a cast away. Hallelujah. To keep your body under is a way of saying you tame your body. Make sure it is tameable. And your body is not tamed. If you want to fast, you cannot fast. You are not able to tame your body. See, those of us who keep dogs and wild dogs, I have wild dogs in my house. Some people cannot visit me because of those dogs. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, the dog will finish you. So if you come, the dog is chasing you. It means you don't have the Holy Ghost. Some people here have visited me. The dog chased you away. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But the dog can be tamed. Amen. To say, shut up. A wild dog, there is somebody that can tame it. Because sometimes you want to be stubborn, even to me. Then I say, shut up. I still want to be stubborn. Then when I carry stick, then he knows that he won't deal with me. Then you go, go like uh, obedience or he is tamed. And you should be able to tame your flesh. So that when you see a woman and he's charged, you can discharge it. Immediately. Say, so shut up. You want to defile the temple of God? You want God to destroy you? Now your wife with that? Hey, shut up. I bind you in Jesus' name. Then he will discharge. He will cool down. I put my body under. Amen. You see yourself doing some carnal things. You begin to think, Chat, not true. 
When did I fast last? Yeah. Tomorrow, no food. And as soon as you say tomorrow, no food, the battle will start. So, you went to chop your breakfast before now 10 a.m. 6.30, now in the you start 6.30 to tell you that that fast no go walk, no go walk, no go walk. Me, I must eat, must eat. You should be able to say, you lie, I will not eat. Amen. And I've told you something about this body. The thing that causes hunger, they are the enzymes in the stomach that digest food. They are anxious to walk. So when the stomach is empty, it gives you notice. Give us food, give us food. We want to walk. So that's why you feel very hungry. Do you notice if you are doing dry fasting, no food, no water? The first day is normal, normal. As you enter the second day, ha <laughs> ha, the battle will start. The third day, hey, you will be hearing your body speaking to you. You will die. Oh. You will die. It's not he that will it, not he that run it. Jesus paid it. Ah! Oh. It is still those enzymes disturbing your communicating with your brain. Amen. But notice it. When you still refuse to give him food the third day, then they will give up. Then they will say, will I say, no food coming from outside though. Then they will face all the reservoirs. All that fat that you have. They will leave you alone and they will start to feed from those fats that you have in the body. Then suddenly you notice the fourth day, you don't feel hungry again. You see? When you are able to escape and reach that fourth day, praise the Lord, you will notice you don't feel hungry again. Those enzymes, they are now feeding on your fat. That is when, when you finish that, your belly will go down. Yeah? Your weight will decrease. Amen. <laughs> All that fat where you get, the reservoir. Amen. Once you are able to tame this body, that is why I told you, I said, lack of fasting can never kill anybody. I mean, lack of food. Fasting does not kill anybody. That second the way they do, I like, say, you go die, you go die. You're not going to die. No activity from inside. Plenty reservoir there where they go chop from. Your body go shake, shake. Hey, hey, hey. I go die. Hey, hey, hey. Can I tell you? If you ignore it and begin to pay attention to something else, the thing will increase to call your attention. You ignore it. After some time, they go do meeting. Will like I say we waste our time with this guy? You. We go die, yo. If we don't find food somewhere else, we go die, yo. Now then go die, no be you. Then they will look for food somewhere else. It's always that second day that people fall out of grace. And if you cannot defeat your flesh, you cannot defeat in any other battle. If you cannot speak to this flesh to tame, you cannot say no to certain things of this flesh. You can't face any external battle. That is the truth. Praise the Lord. So Apostle Paul, to remain consecrated, he said, Hallelujah. He put the body. Let's read it. Let's read it. First Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24. Amen. Know you not that they which run in a race run all, but one receive the prize. So run that you may obtain. And every man that striving for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we, we are fighting for an incorruptible crown. There is a reward hereafter. Hallelujah. Galatians chapter 5. 
verse 16. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16, 17, 18. Hallelujah. This is Apostle Paul to the Galatian church. This I say then, he said, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the loss of the flesh. For the flesh war, lusted against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other so that you cannot do the things that you would. Verse 18. But if you be led of the spirit, you are not under the law. This flesh, amen, has no agreement, no relationship, no cooperation with the spirit. And to defeat the flesh, you must take side with the spirit. To defeat your spirit man, then take side with the flesh. Give the flesh everything it wants. Your spirit man will be dying. Give the spirit more attention. The flesh will subject itself. That is what Apostle Paul is saying. Romans chapter 8, verse 5, 6, 7, 8. Romans chapter 8. He said, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, they mind the things of the spirit. For to be kindly minded is death. That's what I was explaining. Your carnal, your spirit man will die. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Verse 7. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God. Neither indeed can it be subject to the law of God. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot, they cannot please God. Praise the Lord. And that is why Apostle Jude, Jude verse 20, it's a popular scripture among the Pentecostals. That is what they used to be speaking in tongues. Jude verse 20. He said, but you beloved, he said, building up yourselves, building up yourselves on your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. So to them, that scripture means you should be speaking in tongue. That is not the meaning of that scripture. To build yourself up is to build your spirit man. To have the ability to put your flesh under. Be led by the spirit. Praise the Lord. And some people say they cannot fast. I'm telling you, everyone can fast. Everybody has the ability to fast. Except, of course, you are in some health challenges. But I can also tell you that there are sicknesses that are sometimes confronted with fast. I have confirmed it. I will not go to the hospital when I first sick, in those days, God has helped me now. I don't fall sick like before. And I thank God for that. Since the day he asked me, one day I was praying for healing. And he asked me, do you need divine health or divine healing? I will never forget that day. It was that day I knew the difference between divine healing and divine health. Divine healing is when I am sick. I cry to him, he will heal me. Divine health is that the sickness should not come at all. So that day I said divine health. And I noticed from that day, all these nyama nyama things that used to come and disturb me, they stopped. And I thank God for that. Praise the Lord. This is grace. This is mercy. Because I hate sicknesses. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But there are some conditions like ulcer. Condition. But if you don't put something there, those enzymes there create wound in your intestines and they begin to chop your intestines and it's a condition. And so you can't obviously fast for too long. But the important thing is to be spiritual. 
And such people, God gives you more grace with the little spiritual thing you will do. So you don't just sit there, yakata, and you're feeding yourself, feeding yourself. The little that you are able to fast, you make the best use of that period before the belly begin to give you notice. And of course, that also becomes your prayer point for God to heal you. And you say you are on drug. Well, justify yourself. Because some people are going to start taking time for the malaria treatment from tomorrow. What is happening? The doctor gave me 12 injections. I'm to take it every day. You know, I cannot take it on empty stomach. Justify yourself. And you don't know you have been defeated before you even started the battle. You are dead on arrival. You are not the one I'm talking to. I'm talking to those who have made up their mind. Lord, lift me up. That's their song. And let me stand by faith on hell. So during the week when my wife was telling me that see your belly they grow, I said, Don't worry, twenty one days time he goes. Yeah. 21 days time, he go go flat. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> well, I don't need to go, and go to the gym and they punish myself. Make a, oh, no, no, no problem. In fact, before the 21 days is over, I'm going to watch my belly. Yeah, they go down. Anybody where you are, no go down. Man or woman, Except you are pregnant, your belly should go down. And some of you make the mistake of going, you know, all the food where you didn't eat in the morning. <laughs> you reserve it. When it is time to break the fast, see the heap of a bar. <laughs> you will devour the food. Eat it, say, Kai. Eh? I look forward to this hour. 21 days. Okay. Amen. And you don't know something about this body. Amen. If it is because of the food you have been eating too much that your belly come up. Amen. Once you have changed the hour of eating and you eat the same quantity, even if it is once in a day, but you have changed the hour, very soon the body will adjust and then continue from that hour where they give up. When that hour comes, the hunger will increase. Then you go pour the same quantity as before. So what have you lost and what have you gained? So this is a time where you downplay food. This is a time where you just eat to have strength. Not to break fast, to pay for the one where you never chop since the morning. When you come out of such a program, you will see it even affects your health. You notice you breathe and you breathe more freely. You notice a refreshment around your physical man. When you wake up in the morning, you feel better in a healthy condition. You notice you are sharper. You are more alert. You are stronger. All that weak, 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 weakness. Nah, starch, carbohydrate. Too much for your body. Amen. Too much sugar will fool your body. In the morning, one bottle of Coke. In the evening, one bottle of afternoon, Coke, Coke, Coke. And you don't know what you are doing to your health. Suddenly, just notice you are light. And the literally two pains that you have used to have, 
You don't notice they are disappearing. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The reason why you cannot fast, what makes you fast, is desperation. When you have a serious need, then the ability to fast will come automatically. Psalm 42, in verse 1, he said, as the heart panted after the brook, so panted my soul after thee. Oh God, as the heart, it's an animal, panted after the water brooks. Why? Because that animal, I told you before, the peculiarity about it is when a hunter fire it and blood is coming out, it's losing life. But there is a nature God has given that animal. If he can drink water immediately, the blood will stop and he can regain his strength again. So, when he notice that he's dying because blood is out, he's looking for the nearest place to get water. So, imagine the kind of speed he will be running. If they greet him for road, he go answer. If somebody they call him, he go hear him. Why? He's running for his life. And that is the approach. That was why how Esther fasted. That's what made Esther to fast that type of dry fasting. He fasted. She fasted. That's the same reason why Jehoshaphat gathered the whole of Israel to fast. Because life was involved. They are going to wipe off the whole of Israel. They needed God's intervention. There are some bad dreams that when you have like this, you wake up. Nobody will tell you to fast. Even appetite for food, you don't go get. Because you know, something bad is about to happen. That's why you will fast. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. That's why Nineveh fasted the way they fasted. That's why Nehemiah became so sorrowful in his heart. Hallelujah. The loss of a loved one. You won't even remember to eat. When a loved one dies, the condition it sends you into. You say you cannot fast. It's because problem has not knocked at your door. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And a disconnection from God, from the flow of the spirit, because of a sin you have committed, can easily send you into fasting. Without you even preparing for it, you have been preparing for it. And for an effective consecration. Effective consecration. Amen. Remember, I said desperation before I said this thing. Because you, 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 you will need a revelation of what the Holy Ghost is. For you to know that you have to do everything to get the Holy Ghost. Church, the door of salvation will soon close. Where will you be? And the only people that will go in the rapture are those who have received the Holy Ghost. That revelation should send somebody to give diligence to make your calling and election sure. So, for your consecration to be effective, it is not just fasting only. It must be fasting that goes with prayers and goes with studying the word. The three things must go together each time you want to fast. Fasting is to deny yourself of any pleasure. Praying is to tell God why you are fasting. You must pray to tell him why you are fasting. And studying the word of God if the reason why you are fasting is for consecration. It's for God to clean you up and use you. Amen. What is it that God uses to clean up any child of God? It's the word. Can we read Jeremiah 23 verse 29? See how Jeremiah describes the word. Jeremiah 23. Let's read some scriptures. Verse 29. It's not my word like as a fire said the Lord. And his word is like a hammer 
that break the rock in pieces. They say, where you receive the word of God, whatever is the estate of that carnality, the word of God can break it to pieces. Oh, that is the truth. Why? Hebrew chapter 4 verse 12. Hebrew chapter 4 verse 12. For the word of God is quick. That is a living, it's lively and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. So you want God to touch your soul, you use his word. And of the joints and marrow, and it's a designer of the thoughts and intents of the heart. That is the word of God. This is the way the psalmist put it. Psalm 119, verse 9. Verse 10 and 11. Psalm 119. He said, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? Is it by going to the mountain? No. It's by taking heed thereunto, thereto, according to thy word. Verse 10. With my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. And verse 11. Thy word have I heed in my heart that I may not sin against thee. What is it that will stop you from committing sin? Shout it. What is it? Say it again. That's why I pity those of you who don't bother to read your Bible. You say you are an illiterate, but you can hear. Get the messages. Get the tapes. In fact, in this computer age, there is even the Bible with the voice that you can play every day, every day in the morning and listen to it. You can listen to messages on tape. So nobody has excuse in this age. Thy word have I hidden in my heart that I may not sin against you. I'm telling you, the word of God is a designer of the thoughts and intents of the heart. You see, as I'm speaking now, if it is the word of God, somebody here, you would think that somebody has reported you to me. Yet, I don't know your case. A sister once came to this church. She lives abroad. She just came to Nigeria. Somebody invited her to this place. She said the day she came to church, she had her packet of cigarettes in her bag. And when she heard me preaching on that Tuesday, she said she told the person that invited her came and told me about her. Because everything she is. He said, I even mentioned the cigarette that she was smoking. She said she got angry. But later on she found out that it was the word that was discerning her heart. You see? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Load yourself with the word. Then your prayer can be effective. Fasting sharpens that word that you have. Fasting alone cannot save you. But when you quote the word in that fasted estate, then you are giving the word your fasting power. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Psalm 119 verse 105. He said, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word is a lamp. The lamp, that is, it is the word of God that can give you direction. It's the word. So you need the word. You want to be cleansed? John 17 verse 17. John 17. John chapter 17 verse 17. He said, Jesus was praying for the disciples and he said, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So, to be sanctified, it is only the word of God that can sanctify you. And that is why in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 26, it speaks about the washing of the water by the word. 
It is the word of God that cleanses us, that washes us, that removes all the nyama nyama. That is why James said the word of God is a mirror with which you behold who you are and know what to remove out of your life. Praise the Lord. Fasting is so important. Jesus had to teach us how to fast. We see that in Matthew chapter 16 and chapter 6, verse 16, 17 and 18. Matthew, he said, moreover, when you fast, he said, do not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance. Don't be like the hypocrites. For they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fast. Very like I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thy head, bath, rub cream, wash thy face, that thou appear uh, not unto men to fast, they will know you are fasting, but unto thy father which is in secret, and thy father which see it in secret, shall reward thee openly through your testimony. So don't go about announcing. Kai, today now. What happened? We did do 21 days. I don't do 14. I try. Don't do 14. Don't do it. Even say, me, I decided to say, now try. Since last week, I never chop. You know, easy. You know, easy. Then the person that's looking at you cannot do even one day dry fasting. Say, Kai. Oh boy, you be Superman, no? He said, yes. It's not easy. I'm telling you, it's not easy. Since yesterday, as you see, you say, water, I never drink. And water, I'm not going to drink. These 21 days, I go faster. Uh -huh. Why your mouth does smell now? Now fast, now fast. Ah, uh -uh, brother, what happened? You're sick. No, no be secrets. I'm on a journey. I'm on a journey. You see. Uh, you know one talk saying they fast. Then they use another language. Uh, I'm on a mountain. I'm, I'm, I'm on a mountain. Eh, uh, you in that mountain say, eh, ah, more grace, more grace. Thank you. Thank you, brother. You know, easy. But we go do it. Now you never bath. What are not there for mountain? <laughs> Stop that. That's hypocrisy. No reward. No reward. No reward. Amen. Of course, the people around you who know you should eat and you have not eaten, they will ask you, ah, brother, come and eat now. You have not seen when you say, sorry, I will not eat now. I am in a program. That's all. That's why you are not saying it to receive any glory so that they will stop disturbing you to come and eat. Sometimes, now when they ask you that question, I hunger go start. <laughs> Your wife, honey, hey, that act when you ask that day, I don't prefer um, that or her soup. You don't ready. You go look at I go break this fast. <laughs> I don't try now. What is my time now? Um, it's two o'clock. Today on, I go break early. <laughs> oh, glory be to God. Food will not pull you down in the name of Jesus Christ. Clean up yourself. Do your normal things. Please, within this period, you are free to drink water. Drink water. Water not be food. The weather is very hot, especially in this part of the world. You will lose a lot of water through sweat. It can affect your health. Drink water because you'll be going to walk. You need strength. You need, you know, not uh, water. Water not be food. Water can never stop hunger. Drink. In fact, the water said we add more health. It will flush your system as you begin to urinate and drink and urinate. Praise the Lord. I say water will not be coke. (laughs) 
Water, pure water, bottle water. Water, tell your neighbor, only water, only water. From 6 a.m., that doesn't mean that 5.45, you should go and hammer a bar. You will have problem during the day. You won't be fast very well. Your last food should be the last food you eat before you go to bed. You wake up, the fast continue. Don't fast like the Muslims fast. <laughs> There's mandatory eating in 5 a.m. Stop that. The last food you eat before you go to bed. And please don't go to bed 5 a.m. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The 21 day fast is a period to rearrange the altar of the Lord. So that fire can come and consume your sacrifice. Oh, glory be to God. It happened in the Mount Kameshoda. The fire fell down after Elijah rearranged the altar. Blessed be the name of the Lord. With the altar properly arranged, he is the one that baptizes with the Holy Ghost and fire. That fire will come down and ye shall become another man. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That's why they went to the upper room and tarried there. The day of Pentecost, that fire came down. And always remember that the Holy Ghost, Acts chapter 5, verse 32, is given to them that obey. The Holy Ghost is given to them that obey. Obey what? Elijah told them how to rearrange the altar. The people brought the water. The people brought the wood. Anything he told them to do, they did it. And when he stood there and called upon the God of Israel, fire came upon the altar. I am telling you now to fast. If you want the Holy Ghost, obey and fast. Obey and consecrate yourself. Obey. Because we are preparing for home going. And this is part of the preparation. Before home going, there was instruction that Moses gave his people. They obeyed in Egypt. This is another Moses now. If you want to escape from the condemnation that is coming upon this world, go get the Holy Ghost. That is the hope of glory. But let's approach it by a sacrifice. Let's rearrange the altar of our hearts. Our spiritual man. Give diligence to keep, make your calling. Diligence there. Diligence. You don't just come anyhow. This is not a Pentecostal movement. It is a bride movement. We approach the Holy Ghost differently from the Pentecostal denominations. You don't come anyhow and expect to receive anything. You must obey. You must fast. Tell your neighbor, you must fast. He said, watch and pray. Watch. Watch the fulfillment of the scriptures. Watch prophecies being fulfilled. And watch your spiritual life. Watch it. Throughout this period, the psalm for consecration is Psalm 119. And it has about 176 verses. Divided into 21 various sessions. Every day, meditate for the one for that day. It is all a prayer of self-consecration. Can we bow down our heads? Yet in me a clean heart. Oh, Lord. 
for me let this period be a rewarding period for me there is a race before me Lord give me power give me power every day every hour let me be a partaker of your grace in this age talk to him Create me a clean heart, Papa. Give me the power to do your will. Search me, search me. Rearrange my life. Rearrange my spirit, my Lord. Lord Jesus, see me through. See me through. Lord Jesus, see me through. Oh, 
every day Have a day long Have a day long Answer our prayers in the name of Jesus. I am sure somebody's life will never remain the same after this program. That grace you lost, somebody here, within this period, it shall be restored. You who have been desiring to be a better Christian, your time has come. That which has been in you, deposited in you, somebody here, it will bust out this period. It's a time also to confirm the experience you have received before. You tell the Lord whether it was the Holy Ghost you received that day in your former church, that day in your house, when something happened, and He will reconfirm it for you. Father, may this period be a period that we will never forget in our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. The one thing about this period is that it is a period of total rearrangement. It will not only be your spiritual life. Every aspect of your life will be affected. There shall be total turnaround. There shall be total re rearrangement of your life. There shall be total restoration. This period, God will reveal so many things to you. The cause of your problems, God will reveal them to you. God will expose the enemies of your life. And God will fight battles for your freedom. It is a period for deliverance. It is a period for healing. It is a period of divine visitation. That shall be your testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. Help us, Lord, as we begin this journey tomorrow. When we start, let every day be better and better and better. Let nothing disturb us, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. 
In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. 